Louisville Live is just a couple weeks away. On today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast, we are going to be discussing the updated visitor list for the men's basketball program and more on today's episode of the show. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode is brought to you by Upside. Upside is a free app on both the App Store and Google Play. Use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. As always, I want to say thank you all for making Locked On the Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. Even though Louisville Live's a couple weeks away, it seems like the visitor list is close to being finalized uh, for the event. Now, obviously, some names could be added um, you know, as the event gets closer, but the, um, the list, as it is updated today, very, very impressive. We're going to discuss the visitors that will be on campus. We will then um, go a little bit more in-depth by discussing one of the uh, visitors, uh, five-star 2024 wing Carter Knox, who um, has a very interesting ahead of him, and it is a possible bluegrass battle in this. Finally, we will dive into the weekly mailbag segment. So, uh, Louisville Live, like I mentioned, just a couple weeks away, right? Uh, just a couple weekends away, but that still doesn't mean we can't talk about it. The updated list that has kind of been floating out there on social media, look, it's very, very impressive now. This has been a very successful event since, um, you know, its introduction, I believe, in the Chris Mack era. Was it year one or year two under Chris Mack? Um I'm trying to think of when that event initially started. But regardless, um, it, it's been a very, very successful event. Um, if you can remember, uh, once it started, it was a big, big uh, factor in getting um, Aiden Agahan to commit to Louisville, which was a big recruitment that Chris Mack was involved in. And uh, since then, I mean, it has been a fantastic event um, that has rivaled, you know, Kentucky's Big Blue Madness. Uh, Kansas is late night in the fog, and although it's you know obviously not late at night in the basketball arena, um, it's still you know and Louisville's kind of added their own interesting spin to it, um, having it at uh, iconic places around the city, uh, Fourth Street Live, um, Churchill Downs, and now this year Louisville Slugger Field with some special guests that will be in attendance. So it, it, it's always a fun event, um, one that Louisville definitely. Uh, needed to introduce, and I'm glad that they did because it has been a hit in recruiting, um, a huge opportunity to allow recruits to get to witness the culture here in Louisville, um, you know, be surrounded by a good amount of the fan base, just go to an event um, that is meant to hype the program up. And, um, you know, Louisville Live has been very, very successful um, for past recruits. And then this class um, – uh, the 2023 and 2024, you know, obviously Kenny Payne has kind of been laying the groundwork in terms of uh, creating those relationships. Obviously, just coming to Louisville last March, um, you know, we're starting to see the Cardinals be involved with more and more highly rated guys that they, you know, historically probably not too involved in in terms of the high rated five stars. Um, but there is a very impressive list. Um, you know, of updated visitors that are coming to Louisville Live and will be in attendance. Um, so far, it's 2023 five-star guard A.J. Johnson, who is uncommitted at the time. Um, I am very, very, um, I'm a very, very big fan of his game. You know, I've been a, a huge advocate for A.J. Johnson, obviously the little brother of Jalen Green, who if you know me, you know I'm a huge Houston Rockets fan. So uh, obviously that connection it is interesting, um, but he plays kind of like his brother, um, you know, Jalen Green throughout high school. And when he got to the G League and even the first year in the pros for the Rockets, 
Um, you know, you saw the skill put on full display, but it was a matter of, you know, um, you know, gaining a little bit more weight, adding a little bit more muscle to his frame. So he's able to, you know, contend physically with, um, you know, with, uh, bigger athletes and things of that nature. Um, but when it comes to AJ Johnson, you know, I think he went into last season listed at about 150 pounds. Uh, since then, it seems like he's added about, I, I think on his recruiting profile now, it's like 165 pounds. So he will continue to, you know, to add weight and to add more muscle to his frame. But the skill set is there. I think he has one of the highest ceilings in all of the class, um, in my opinion. And uh, I know that some people say, oh, you're just saying that because Kentucky is, is favored for DJ Wagner right now. I'll be honest, uh, A.J. Johnson, in my opinion, would be like number one um, in, on the priority list if I could, um, you know, if I could dictate the uh, the pecking order on the priority list. A.J. Johnson would be number one for me, a combo guard, you know, six foot five, continuing to grow. Uh, you know, once that uh, frame starts to fill out more, you're going to see him be able to drive to the basket more effectively, which is something he already does, but has a ton of athleticism, very quick guard that creates his own offense in all three levels of the half court offense. Uh, extremely dangerous in transition, solid in terms of jumping passing lanes on defense, an active defender with active hands. Look, I think that the ceiling is astronomical for a player like A.J. Johnson. There's probably not many more players in the country that have seen their respective stocks rise in recruiting like A.J. Johnson has seen. So that's something that I look at and I'm like, okay, um, you know, this upcoming season, you know, he's going to continue to um, mature physically and ultimately get to a, a level to where he's expanding his game even more. And I think that he is a possible top five level talent uh, in the draft or in the 2024 draft, he would be. Um, look, I think that the 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 ceiling is unlimited. And he would be a huge addition. And Louisville is right in the mix there with Texas. Uh, so this is a, a big time to get him on campus, get him to visit uh, after he visited uh, Chris Beard's program. So, um, But as the 2023 class is important, 2024 class, you know, Kenny Payne has been trying to really, really uh, create some momentum in, in the 2024 cycle. I have yet to see see a recruiting event in Louisville history to where they had so many highly rated basketball players on campus on the 2024 class. Um, they will have right now on campus. They will have Carter Bryant from, um, you know, the, the West coast seventh ranked player in the country, Carter Knox, ninth ranked player in the country. Um, you also have, uh, guys like Trenton flowers, 21st in the country, and possibly, I don't think it's been confirmed yet, uh, Jamari Phillips, number 30 in the country, could also uh, be on campus at that time. So that's something definitely to focus on. Um, there's a chance that Caleb Glenn could end up making it to, to Louisville Live, um, I, I've heard. I'm, I can't really confirm that or not. It'll be interesting to see if they could get a, another surprise guy, like maybe like Elliot Cadeau, who's ranked number eight in the 2020. 24 cycle uh but but that just goes to show you the um the opportunity that louisville live presents not only to try to create momentum for the fan base which is big because you know you're one of a respective head coach a program that hasn't you know legitimately been in the tournament since 2019 you're throwing that COVID 2020 season out of the window at the moment um you know 2021 was disappointing 2022 was a train wreck and Louisville fans all together, you know, are kind of desperate for some for some good times and some good news. And, um, you know, Louisville Live is, is hoping to create that momentum as we head into basketball season and try to, you know, electrify the fan base and just, you know, put some good vibes around the program and, and the fan base. Um, but obviously recruiting is a big aspect of this as well. And having two top ten players, uh, two that you're going to be very, very, um, you know, serious in their recruitments um you know Trenton Flowers is a guy that is, is being recruited by Duke Kentucky um North Carolina etc that's going to be a big battle and then if you can get a guy like Jamari Phillips on campus I mean you're talking about four or five star level caliber players to go along with AJ Johnson who's a top 10 player in the 2023 class and maybe you know your four star hometown hero commitment Caleb Glenn so 
Um, you know, not to mention there's a handful of you know, standout women's uh, recruiting prospects that are going to be in town. Like um, you know, Louisville commit Soleil Williams will be um, you know on. I was about to say on campus. Sawyer Fields not on campus, but uh, she will be in attendance at Louisville Live. So it's just a an interesting opportunity here for Kenny Payne and Jeff Walls, for that matter, um, to create some big time momentum. Um, I'm not sure if anyone will be on commitment watch after this visit, um, but obviously you just never know. I know that the the main recruit that most fans are going to be focusing on are or is. Uh, AJ Johnson because he's in the 2023 class and a lot of these 2024 guys are still enjoying their uh, recruiting processes respectively and um, you know just kind of soaking in the process and things of that nature so um, yeah I think that this is a an interesting opportunity to create momentum uh, to continue to further those relationships get these players on campus into the city uh, around the fan base to where they're able to witness the culture of Louisville basketball. I know that, you know, the the PR public image of Louisville basketball has kind of been hit over the past um, you know, handful of seasons with the scandals and things of that nature. But hey, look, don't get it twisted. You know, this is a very, very passionate fan base that has legitimately been to hell and back and they're right here and we're ready to support the Cardinals. So um definitely be sure to get your tickets to Slugger Field. It's going to be a fun time. A special guest will be in attendance. Some people have you may guess is that it's going to be Jack Harlow or, you know, someone in that celebrity realm, but we will, we will just have to see, but I do want to take it a little bit further. There's one prospect um, that will be in attendance for Louisville live. That is five star 2024 wing uh, Carter Knox, the younger brother of Kentucky lottery pick Kevin Knox. We will discuss what's going to be very interesting about his recruitment going forward um we'll do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show upside from cringing at the pump to getting an eye-opening check at your favorite restaurant inflation is hitting us all where it hurts and it really hurts that's why i started using upside it's an incredible app for everyone who buys gas groceries or dines out with every purchase i'm earning cash back thanks to upside to get started download the free upside app use my promo code locked and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Ever since I started my new job, I've been driving a lot, eating a lot of fast food, unfortunately, um, and then obviously filling up uh, a couple times a week. So Upside has been a huge, huge asset um, in my commute life. Um, like I said, download that app, claim the offer for what you're buying on Upside, check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and get paid. In comparison to credit cards, rewards or loyalty loyalty programs you can earn three times more cash back with upside upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week um not obviously individually but collectively that's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the app store so download the free upside app and use the promo code locked to get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more that's five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more using the promo code locked so, moving right on along, talking about a specific prospect that will be on campus for Louisville Live um, after, or I'm sorry, the weekend after he goes to Big Blue Madness, that is five-star small forward Kevin Knox. Um, Kevin Knox is a prospect that, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Carter Knox, not Kevin Knox, I'm, I'm sorry, um, I, I said Kevin Knox, look at me. Um, Carter Knox, uh, you know, six foot six, 205 pounds, small forward from the Tampa area. The younger brother of Kevin Knox is ranked as the ninth best prospect in the class. Uh, according to 24 seven sports, the fifth best, according to the 24 seven sports composite, second best small forward, the best prospect in the state of Florida. And, um, has ties to both Louisville and Kentucky. Obviously, his brother played at Kentucky, but his main recruiter on that Kentucky staff was none other than Kenny Payne. Now, if you go back in, in the memory file and you remember that recruitment with Kevin Knox, it seemed like he was a virtual lock to go to Florida State. I remember that in that class, and then out of nowhere, boom, he commits to Kentucky. 
And a lot of that was the relationship with Kenny Payne. I'm not saying that John Calipari didn't have anything to do with that, but Kenny Payne was one of the biggest uh, you know, influences in that recruitment. Um, Payne has a uh, solid relationship with uh, the Knox's uh, father. Um, and this definitely could come down to a, a battle between Louisville and Kentucky. And, um, you know, he basically said this about Kentucky in a, in a um, article with Travis Branham of 24-7 Sports. He was in last week uh, discussing John Calipari, uh, and we had a good conversation. He's been um, good recruiting me, and that's a blessing as always. I'm excited about the visit. I've been to Lexington like 20 times, but that was for my brother. And about Louisville, he says, Coach Payne is recruiting me and sending me videos to get me better. They were in two weeks ago, too. I haven't been to Louisville yet, so that will be a good experience. It's crazy. My brother was coached by both of them, so I have a good relationship. So it's pretty tough. I have people in my DMs tell me to commit to Louisville and Kentucky. I just smile. Um, Branham also um, notes Knox told 24-7 Sports that he's in no rush to make a decision and other schools like LSU, South Florida, Kansas, and Auburn and all, have all been in to see him since the recruiting period began. Obviously, I don't really have to spell it out here. Getting Knox on campus it is a big time um uh you know it's a big time development for louisville considering that he's been to lexington a handful of times and has never been to louisville's campus uh getting him uh around the city around the fan base around the players um in the program and just getting to see uh things from the inside look um obviously having that relationship with kenny payne is big as well and like i said i really could see this coming down to a battle between Louisville and Kentucky for the five star services. Um, when I watch his game, uh, kind of gives me some, you know, like Kevin Knox vibes. I, I think that that's cliche to say, oh, he plays like his brother. Well, not necessarily. I think that they they play in, in, in a similar way in some facets of the game. Uh, in, in particularly, I think that um, one thing about Kevin that impressed me when he he was at Kentucky was I thought that he was a solid ball handler. And it seems like by all accounts from like AAU circuits and things of that nature, Carter has um, definitely improved um, in that realm. I think that uh, Carter is probably a better um, three point shooter at this point in their respective careers. You know, when Kevin was in this, it was in this um, you know, spot in his high school career. Uh, Carter projects probably as more of a. Uh, it seems I would say I, I don't like to use the term three and D here because I don't necessarily think he's going to be limited to just being a three point shooter who can defend. Um, I think that, you know, he kind of reminds me of like a, a, a secondary or even a tertiary playmaker to where he's, he's got the ball in his hands. And when he's able to continue to improve that ball handling, um, you know, I think that you're going to see him initiate the offense a little bit more has the solid ability to take it to the rack, um, has, uh, added muscle to his frame, you know, over 200 pounds now. So he's able to, uh, really use that to his advantage, but I, I think he's a very crafty scorer, especially, um, you know, in transition, uh, does a good job of absorbing contact while taking it to the basket and finishing, uh, through contact. And obviously I think that the, um, the main, um, skill that he showcases is that perimeter shooting. He's a very, very good three point shooter. Uh, I like the defensive intensity as well. Crashes the board. Well, crashes the boards well i think high school wise he's average he averaged over 20 points per game and over seven rebounds as um as a sophomore so i mean that that's big time uh to think about so you know the fact that he is um you know very very attentive to rebounding solid at jumping passing lanes as well i think that you know possibly continuing to grow you know six foot six i i think kevin knox is kind of in that area as well six seven six eight maybe um but Look, I think that this is going to be a very, very interesting recruitment for both Kentucky and Louisville because, you know, obviously the Knox family has ties to both parties. Um, and, and the test here is going to be, well, how strong is that relationship with Kenny Payne? Um, obviously, I think that, you know, by the time the 2024 you know, cycle rolls around, there's going to be a good amount of playing time available at the wing position probably for Louisville. And we'll kind of see how that goes. But I'm very interested to see how the visits go. Um, but it's nice that right after Big Blue Madness, he comes to Louisville for Louisville Live, and that that's a very, very um, – I wouldn't necessarily say it's a, it's an end-all, be-all type situation, but it, it's nice that, you know, 
you don't get a lot of time for that visit to simmer because you're at Louisville the very next weekend. So hopefully things go well with not only Knox, but all the other um, recruits that are visiting. But with the final segment, we'll dive right into the weekly mailbag. Before we do that, I want to say thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services, including YouTube and WHAS 11 plus five days a week, your team every day. So diving right into the weekly mailbag segment, it seems like there are some very, um, how do I put this, passionate questions that have been asked. Um, I'm going to answer these as honestly as I can, even if I don't know. Um, The first one is, it is, when do you think Louisville decides to make a coaching change? Football, obviously. And they're discussing the head coach. Um Look, I said on the Monday show, I think that this is an instance to where Scott Satterfield finishes out the season and then the Louisville Athletic Administration makes a decision after the season. Um, I know his buyout decreases um, about a million and a half between now. uh, I think once December 31st hits, that's when the buyout decreases. I'm not saying that they wait that long. Uh, if they do decide to make the change. But uh, I don't think that a move will come in season unless Louisville just goes on a huge losing streak to where, you know, the the wheels fall off the train or wheels fall off the bus and the train goes off the tracks, I guess will be uh, a more accurate analogy. Um, but like I said, I don't think that this is going to be a move that we're going to see anytime soon. Second question is, do you think that there is an instance to where Josh Hurd meets with Satterfield and decides to bring Sat back, but makes him make some big time coaching changes. I assume that means firing Brian Brown uh, would be the, the code for making coaching changes. Cause Lance Taylor, I mean, you're one unless he does fire Lance Taylor as well, but I, I can't see that. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think that it'll be interesting because it all depends on how the team finishes out the season, right? I mean, if this team gets to six wins, I think you're like, okay, he's probably back, and then you you might have to make a change at, at the defense coordinator position. But I don't know. It's a, it's such a tough end of the schedule, and then, you know, the team's banged up. Malik Cunningham's hurt. He's questionable for Virginia. Um, we'll kind of see how that goes. So I, I really don't know. I think that um, it, it's probably not something that's – probable i think if they're going to make a change they'll probably make a full-on change but then again it depends on how the team finishes the season but um satterfield made made the effort of going out and saying look we're not throwing in the towel yet we're going to try to turn this ship around so we'll see how that goes question three can louisville win without malik cunningham in charlottesville it'll be tough um and i'm not saying that brock doman can't do it i'm just saying Right now, we haven't you know gotten any evidence to suggest that Louisville will succeed on offense with Brock under center. Now, that's not to say that he doesn't have the talent because I think he's very talented, uh, and he hasn't necessarily prepared for a game as the starter going into the game. So that might be a little bit of a factor. But um, I don't really put too much stock into that South Florida performance because it was garbage time against backups, and South Florida's not really all that good anyway. Um, but didn't necessarily look all that good against Boston College, and that's against a defense that uh, isn't all the greatest. It's respectably middle of the <sighs> middle of the pack. Um, but, uh, look, I think that um, your chances decrease significantly with Malik Cunningham out. I, I think that, put it this way, if Malik plays, I think it's a toss-up, and I think that Louisville wins barely. If Malik Cunningham does not play, I'm predicting Louisville to lose. Um, Simple as that. I mean, you're talking about a player that is is the heart and soul of an offense, Um, really is one of the – is the focal point of the offense. Like, the whole offense is surrounded by him, especially when you have Tyon Evans and Travion Cooley banked up as well, and they're day-to-day. So, um, yeah, I'm not necessarily – I'm not necessarily sure, but, I mean, Brock has the talent. It's just a matter of uh, producing and putting that on the field. So, uh, But that's going to wrap up all we have for the mailbag segment. Like I said, there were so many questions about Sat that were essentially reworded um, into the first question. So uh, before we get out of here, be sure to check out the Locked on ACC podcast hosted by Candace Cooper. No better way to get that podcast 
or no better way to get your conference news than to check out that podcast five days a week um, on all streaming services. Thanks again for making us your first listen of the day. The Locked On Global podcast is free on all streaming services. Um, tomorrow's episode, we'll talk about the game against Virginia. Um, we'll talk about players to watch. We'll talk about keys to the game and um, uh, what we'll need to do to win, um, obviously. So uh, be sure to check that out when that comes out. But that's going to wrap up this Thursday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here.